Iron Dome is one component of a layered missile defense that Israel operates. Uh, it's the the lowest down, the the last line of defense, as it were. Uh, there are two other components plus some outside assistance. Uh, the other components are the the arrow missiles, which uh, are there to intercept the long range ballistic missiles that are coming in from quite high up in the atmosphere. Uh, it's not clear if this operated against the Iranian attack. The the mid layer is called David's Sling, and it's against more intermediate range threats. Uh, this is clearly what did a lot of the work in the attacks over the weekend. The Iron Dome is the, the last layer, and it's site-specific. It's around Israeli population centers and military facilities. Uh, there are a number of Iron Dome sites around Israel, and it would have participated in shooting down the incoming drones and missiles in the last stages of their flight. And in addition, there were also aircraft of the Israeli Air Force that were active in shooting down uh, particularly drones, they could be quite effective in this role, uh, and assets from the U.S. Navy, uh, both ships with anti-missile capabilities and aircraft uh, with anti-drone capabilities that were involved in some measure uh, in the weekend's activity. It's believed that the Iron Dome is consistently blocked more than 90% of rockets fired towards Israel. What's the technology behind that that makes it so effective? is a system of radar that detects incoming objects, uh, missiles and drones and things like that, uh, that is connected to uh, short-range batteries of anti-missile missiles. Uh, there are a number of different technologies that are in use. Uh, some impact on the incoming missile, some explode in the area and try to destroy it with the, the explosion. When we look at the Iron Dome, and as Israel's defense strategy, do you think that that's had an influence on enemy states and how they conduct their warfare? You know, some might be quite surprised that Iran launched all these airstrikes knowing that this Iron Dome has been so effective at countering them. Uh, the important thing to, to consider is why Israel missile defenses, in particular Iron Dome, were created. Uh, and this is because about uh, 20 years or so ago, uh, there was a uh, a direct threat to Israel from uh, rather primitive, unguided ballistic systems used by Hezbollah and Hamas to strike Israel. These were weapons of terror. They did not have the accuracy to target military installations specifically. And so the primary threat was to Israeli civilians. Uh, so to protect its population, Israel developed its missile defense systems, including Iron Dome. Uh, and... In this era, they have proved to be fairly effective in stopping incoming threats. Uh, in the most recent case, Iran chose to uh, attack Israel with uh, its ballistic missiles and drones, uh, many of which are a, uh, a higher degree of accuracy than the original things that Iron Dome was designed to protect against. Uh, but Iron Dome is still effective against most uh, short range and medium range uh, missile and drone threats. Uh, Iran likely decided on this option uh, because uh, this is a capability that it had. Uh, there is no uh, uh, proximity between Iran and Israel. And so this was a way to strike Israel from a distance. Uh, it's also a, uh, a mathematical calculation. Uh, when you think about missile defense, it's uh, the, the defending thing, the interceptors, are much more expensive than the incoming ballistic missiles. Uh, so it's possible in the economic sense to overwhelm defenses. Uh, and you saw that happen because a few of the missiles did get through. A very small number. Uh, so I think it, it should be accounted as a success for Israeli missile defense. But nevertheless, there were still some things that were able to get through it. There is a, a, a significant difference in types of missile defenses uh, based on what is, is coming in and what you're trying to defend against. And the defense against the sort of low-tech 
uh, early generation ballistic missiles that Iran has fired at Israel is of an order of magnitude easier than defending against longer range, much faster moving ballistic missiles. Uh, so we, and, and, and also the kinds of missiles that Russia is using in Ukraine. Uh, so we have some, some, uh, non-experts saying things like, uh, Ukraine should have Israeli missile defenses. Well, the threat that they are responding to is much greater. Russia has much better technology. Uh, so it, you, you can't simply put an iron dome around Kiev and think that it's going to be completely safe. Uh, it's a much more complicated set of engineering problems. Uh, so as long as, as that is clear, uh, I don't want my assessment of Israeli missile defenses to be extrapolated as uh, we could stop all Russian or all Chinese missiles if they were to launch them at Taiwan or uh, what was it that Medvedev said, it, it create a tsunami that will wipe London off the map. But Russia is still able to get some through, and that goes back to what I was saying about the mathematics of the thing. It's always possible to overwhelm missile defenses by just firing more things at your target. And in terms of Iran's arsenal, how would you say that it compares with Israel? Do you think that this most recent attack by Iran shows its full capabilities? Uh, it's probably likely the full capabilities as far as missiles go. Uh, Iran is a is a larger country than Israel, obviously. But Israel maintains a significant technological advantage when it comes to a military confrontation. And so I think neither side wants to go to a full-blown uh, conflict because it would, it would not be in either's interest. And the degree of death and destruction would be large on both sides. What's your thought on Iran's nuclear capabilities? Uh, Iran has uh, a certain level of nuclear technology. Uh, they are enriching nuclear materials at a greater rate than before. Uh, they are not yet capable of producing a nuclear weapon, uh, nor do I think have they made the decision uh, to go to where they can produce a nuclear weapon. Uh, that said, I think it is very clear that the policy of the Iranian government is to do everything they are allowed to do under the Non-Proliferation Treaty short of producing a weapon. Uh, so that in the case of a national emergency, uh, an emergency of the sort that, that a nuclear deterrent would, in their minds, be helpful. Uh, and I emphasize in their minds because I don't think it's ever very helpful. In, in that situation, they could produce a weapon theoretically in a relatively short amount of time. And when you say relatively short, could you give a, a time frame on that? Could you give an estimate? That's always a, uh, a very difficult question. Uh, most experts, and I'm not a scientist, so I don't uh, understand the physics very well, uh, but most of the people who do would say it would be in the area of months. Israel said that they will retaliate in response to these attacks from Iran. How do you think that's going to play out? Do you see this escalating into a wider conflict within the Middle East? Uh, I, I hope it does not escalate any far further. It's uh, Israel has said that it's going to do something. Uh, I don't know what that is. They don't uh, appear to have very many options, but I'm sure that they're developing some. Uh, it's not in the interests of Israel or Iran for the conflict to escalate further. Uh, so it's a question of when one or the other decides that uh, it has made the point it wants to make and is able to step away. Uh, if I were advising the Israeli government, I would say this is a good point to do so. You've demonstrated that the missile defense is effective. Uh, Iran's attempt at attacking Israel is by any measure a big failure. It, it could be a good moment to declare victory and walk away. Uh, but my country was not under direct attack, so it's presumptuous for me to make that judgment for Israel it will be up to them to decide if they need to make a statement and respond in a military way.